This is Hyman Bloom's 1940 painting, The Synagogue. Art historian Dorothy Abbott Thompson calls it the breakthrough painting for Bloom. To start to understand this painting, we can break it up into three parts. First, there's the bottom section with these crimson red stands, the cantor and the congregation. We can notice the vertical lines and the sense of upward motion that they provide to the canvas. We see this in the beams of the stand, the long cloak and elongated hands of the cantor, and the rhythmic repeating lines that make up the congregation. The next section we can identify is the gallery of windows that separates the congregation and the ceiling. The movement from the bottom of the canvas up towards the heavens is felt in the crunched timbers of the windows here. This section also suggests a sense of separation between the congregation and the glowing, possibly holy we might read, chandeliers up above. The chandeliers here are especially important to note because they are an early example of one of Bloom's most explosive and vibrant series, the chandeliers and the Christmas trees. The chandeliers themselves bend and distort in response to the congregation below. They warp and curl the space, enclosing both the viewer and the congregation. Now that we've seen this painting for what it is on the canvas, we can talk about some of its background and some of the inter interpretations we can draw from it. Oh. Alright, now it's been several days, I've changed my outfit and all the lighting and opened the door, we can talk about some of the background, maybe some of the interpretations of this work. Art historian Isabel Derval. Delvo. Delvo. Okay. Art historian Isabel Dervaux wrote, Bloom remembered the feelings of ecstasy aroused in him by the cantorial music that he heard at the synagogue. To give this feeling visual expression, he used formal distortions and an animated paint handling to suggest the transport of the singers. The heads turned 90 degrees upward and the swinging of the chandeliers under the ceiling materialized the sound of the music filling the space of the synagogue. Such an emphasis on physical expression corresponds to the theatricality and emotionalism that characterizes Eastern European synagogal music. Some historians have connected the work to other religious iconography. Art historian Judith Bookbinder suggests a connection to the medieval spiritual imagery in the Montier Grandval Bible. Bad pronunciation. I'm so sorry. This is going to be worse. The Carolingian, the Carolingian, the Carolingian illustrator made Moses as an intercessor with God, larger than the congregation of the Israelites in the lower section of the image who stand in rapt attention to receive the laws from God's hand. The congregants form a tight band as though carved in low relief. Bloom's cantor, also an intercessor with God, stands in similar relationship to his congregation. The exaggerated twist of his head, echoed in the poses of the choir, also recalls the upturned heads of the frieze of elders on the tympanium above the entry to the Romanesque Abbey Church of St. Pierre at Moissac. For me, the distorted space in this work gives a really subjective feeling, as though the intensity of the worshippers' experiences have distorted the space around them. In parts, it heightens the luminosity and brilliance of certain elements, uh, and in other parts, it's much darker and hazy, as though that was a part of the world that you weren't looking at if you were there in person. That sort of subjective feeling where the viewer can kind of see through the eyes of the painter, I suppose, um, is really interesting to me in particular about Bloom's work because it points to some of his uh, more expressive, potentially more subjective work uh, in the future as he moves towards uh, a, a more abstract, a more expressive, a more colorful, um, potentially more spiritual expression of not only just the chandeliers and Christmas trees, uh, but of later works that he would explore that include images of the human body, um, cadavers, uh, different animals, and all sorts of like really, really vibrant, organic, and alive imagery. So this work is, yeah, very interesting to me as like the starting point of that for Bloom. I'm curious to know what you thought of it, and I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about it. Thank you.